okay? We were broke. And he upgraded, number one, he paid for my hotel room and upgraded Leanna and I, and he put us in a suite. And he said, just come hang out with me all week. I want to pour into your life, and I want to partner with you. And I was like, okay. And so I spent a whole week with him. And one of the things that I can tell you about him is we were sitting at a table, and some of the most world-famous preachers in the whole world were sitting there with us. I don't know if y'all know who Brother Jack Hayford is, who I'm a big hero. He's a big hero of mine. Uh, uh, Pastor Jack Hayford was sitting at the table. There was all these people, and he had invited Leanna and I to be a part of that. And we were sitting there with them just going, wow. And we were at this um, uh, a Moroccan uh, thing that takes four hours to eat, and you sit on pillows, and they bring out a little bit of food, and then, you know, an hour later, they bring out a little bit more, and all this kind of stuff. We were all sitting there, and we're all shooting a bull, and we're all having a good time, and all of a sudden, for no reason whatsoever, the power of the Holy Spirit began to move among us. And I was just kind of like, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, Why am I crying? (laughs) Have you ever just been like in church or something and or at home doing your own study or whatever and then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just move into the room and that happened and we all just started worshiping Jesus and it was crazy and then and I mean it was like a thick crazy cool presence of God and that happened with us yesterday at my house with all the elders we were in there and, and we were all praying and the power of God just moved in my living room and it was so awesome And guys, we were all just bawling and squalling and just worshiping Jesus. I didn't even know what in the worldwide world of sports was going on. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I just know God's here. And all of a sudden, Benny Hill got up. (laughs) And he said, forgive me, brethren, I'm being summoned. And he got up and left. And he went back to his hotel room to go seek the Lord. When he left... Everybody there at that table started to say, this happens every time we hang out with him. The power of God moves, and this is God telling him, I need you to stop what you're doing, and I need you to come seek me because you're going to find me right now. And that's how that brother lives his life. Now, I want to tell you, I learned something on that. Number one, I'm just going to tell you guys publicly, I had been one of the most critical people of that man that he's ever seen. And he was so good and he was so gracious to me. And God Almighty spoke to me in a huge way and said, you don't have to agree with somebody and you don't have to like somebody's style to respect them as people of God. You need to keep your mouth shut. And I went, uh, yes, sir. I don't know if God ever takes you somewhere and spanks you, but he does that to me all the time. <laughs> How many of y'all know what it's like to get a spanking from the Lord? Yeah, okay. Well, if you don't, I'm worried about your relationship with him. Because if you're one of his kids, you will get a spanking. The Bible says that he chastises his sons. Now, I know that when you go to Walmart, you want to spank everybody else's kids, but you don't because those are not your kids. But your kids, you get on to them. And guys, if you're going to walk with King Jesus, what's real is, man, you know what? You're going to get spankings every now and then. And man, I tell you what, I got a, I'm talking about a world-class spanking on that trip. There's been another time I was hanging out with Steve Fish and Steve Fish pastors Convergence Church in Fort Worth, and we were in Nicaragua. And we were doing this conference, and uh, we were both sleeping in the same room, and I had this little bitty tiny bed, and he had this bigger bed, and there was a, you know, it was super hot, and there was an air conditioning unit above my head. And in the middle of the night, I, I, I woke up, and I, re- and I realized, okay, are y'all ready for this? My bed's wet. Now, I'll tell you, if, you know, you have a lot of respect for somebody, and if you're both sleeping in the same room on a mission trip, it's not a good idea to wet the bed. And the first thing I thought was, I thought, oh, my, my God, what have I done? I was like, no. I was like, oh, no. And I'm just sitting there, and then I'm like, oh, no, no, I know what it is. The air conditioner has dripped down on the bed. That's what it is. And so I started kind of feeling around, and it really wasn't wet anywhere except for right here. My pillow was soaking wet. And then I was like, dude, I'm all clogged up. Oh, my gosh. I was crying. I've been crying while I was asleep. And that's even worse than wet in the bed to me because the brother is going to be, man, that brother cries in his sleep. He's going to be telling everybody. <laughs> He's like, man, I hung out with Troy. And you know what he does? He wets the bed and he cries in his sleep. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, why am I crying? Oh, stupid. Stupid, don't do that. What's wrong with you? And so I, 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 I get up and I'm like, why am I crying? Did I have like some bad dream or something? What happened? And I look across the room and in the pitch dark, it's four o'clock in the morning or three o'clock in the morning. 
And Steve Fish is setting up in bed, and he's got these headphones on, and he's got his computer in his lap, and he's worshiping Jesus. And just quiet. And guys, the, the presence of God was so crazy in the room that I was worshiping Jesus in my sleep, and I was crying in my sleep. Okay, and I was like, whoa, I never experienced anything like this before, because at that time of my life, I hadn't, been, I hadn't been around very many next level people who live a consecrated life to the presence of the Lord. So Moses says, I gotta, Moses says, God's got a blessing for you, but you can only get it if you're intentionally postured towards the presence of God or consecrated. Somebody say that's pretty good preaching. Hallelujah. Psalm chapter 34, verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So friends, we only comprehend the goodness of God through personal encounter. You need to have those kinds of experiences with God or you're not going to know that God is good. You don't read that God is good and find that out. You can read it and find out that it's there, but you're not going to actually know it until you personally experience it or you taste and see that the Lord is good. Man, doesn't that just make you want to just go home and cry out to God and say, please show up in my life in an incredible way like what you never, ever, ever had before? Doesn't that make you want to come down here after the service and have somebody pray with you and believe God for his manifest presence within your own life? Doesn't it make you want to? I got this one crazy friend who she's, she's a beautiful woman and she's married and she's got kids, but she will literally get up at three o'clock in the morning and for two hours, she will clean up her house spotless, and then she will deck herself out. She will put on the nicest ring she has, the nicest, I mean, she does her makeup, she does her hair, and then she sits on the floor and she says, Jesus, I'm here. She gets as beautiful as she possibly can. And I want to tell you something, this brother right here is ugly when he gets up in the morning when I cry out to God. I walk outside my drawers and just, I love you, Lord. Love you, King Jesus. I'm drinking coffee. I love you, God. My hair's all over the place. But you know what, man? She just finds it so special. She's like, no, I, if I would do that for my husband, why would I not do that for my king? I'm like, whoa, you better not mess with her, man. Because that woman is highly favored of the Lord. It's just so important, friends, for us to live a life of consecrated purpose towards the presence of God because there is a word in due season. Amen? God Almighty has a word for you. One of my favorite scriptures whenever it comes to this is, is the willingness to have a response, just like King David said in Psalms 27, verse 8. When you told me to seek you, my heart said unto you, Lord, I'm going to seek you. This is just that simple. That there are nudges, that there are invitations, subtle invitations by the Holy Spirit, plus dramatically awesome invitations, just like what happened at, at the dinner that night. I want to tell you, that was pretty daggum dramatic. And you, and you know how dramatic Benny Hill can get. Where he'll just go, the Lord is summoning me. I'm like, dang. <laughs> Brother can't even sit down to eat. And God Almighty just rocks his world and rocks everybody else's world. Right? You know, just in saying that, and even though I'm, even though I'm being silly, I mean, I can feel the presence of God right now. I can tell you that all the next level people, man, that I hang out with, Brother, Brother Ward Simpson, who runs God TV, uh, Ron Cantor, who is a very good friend of mine. Guys, we'll all be sitting around and we'll all just be shooting the bull and we'll be being a, we'll be being a bunch of knucklehead boys, which I love doing that, right? And then all of a sudden, we'll just start praying in the Holy Ghost because God Almighty will just show up. All of a sudden, we'll just prophesy to each other. All of a sudden, man, we'll just say, dude, I feel the presence of God right now. Boom. We love you, Jesus. Like, well, we don't really do that. You will if you get cancer. Well, we don't really do that. You will if your kids twist off. Well, we don't really do that. You will if all hell breaks loose. Why don't you just go ahead and go after Jesus in an extraordinary way right now? Amen. Amen. Psalms chapter 84, verse 5 says this. Blessed is the man whose heart is set upon pilgrimage. Are you bound and determined to have an awesome journey in King Jesus this year? Amen? You know, the other thing that we need to be dedicated to is contemplation. Number